In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick built their model of the structure of DNA, the principal features of which are still accepted today. DNA consists of two strands that are complementary in base sequences to each other. A cytosine base in one strand always pairs with a guanine base in the other. An adenine base in one strand always pairs with a thymine base in the other. The complementary nature of the two strands suggested to the scientists a model for DNA replication. They proposed that the old strands serve as templates to make new complementary strands. The two resulting double helices would each contain one new and one old strand. There are other models to consider as well. For example, the old DNA molecule could be preserved and an entirely new DNA molecule could be produced from it. In yet another model, the result of replication would be two molecules with old and new DNA interspersed along each strand. From your knowledge of DNA replication, which one of these models is correct? Click on the correct model. From your knowledge of DNA replication, drag the correct names to the three models of DNA replication. Although Watson and Crick proposed the model of semi-conservative replication, at the time no evidence existed to prove that this model was correct. To solve this problem, the scientists Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stahl designed an experiment to test Watson and Crick's model of replication. The key to the Messelson-Stahl experiment was devising a strategy to distinguish between old versus newly synthesized DNA. They distinguished the two by labeling them with isotopes. They grew Escherichia coli bacteria in the presence of either a heavy isotope of nitrogen, N15, or the ordinary light isotope, N14. After many generations, the DNA in the bacteria contained either the heavy or the light form of nitrogen, but not both. In this example, the nitrogen atoms in the thymine base are labeled with either the heavy or the light forms of nitrogen. The scientists took samples of each bacterial culture. They processed the bacteria to release the DNA into solution. Equal volumes of the DNA solutions were mixed together, and then this solution was mixed with a concentrated solution of the salt, cesium chloride. The density of the cesium chloride was 1.71 grams per cubic centimeter, the same density as DNA. The tube was placed in an ultra-centrifuge capable of high-speed centrifugation, 140,000 times the force of gravity for 20 hours. At this high speed, cesium ions have a tendency to sediment toward the bottom of the tube, forming a higher density solution at the bottom compared to the top. Other substances, such as the DNA, move to the position within the tube that matches their own density. Which band of DNA contains the heavy isotope, N15, of nitrogen? Click on the correct band. With their technique of separating heavy versus light DNA established, the scientists tested the hypothesis of semi-conservative replication. They first grew E. coli for 14 generations in a medium with N15 in the form of ammonium chloride as the sole nitrogen source. Growing the bacteria for many generations ensured that all the DNA would be labeled with heavy nitrogen. At this time, they isolated their first bacterial sample prepared the DNA, and added the cesium chloride for centrifugation. At the same time, some of the bacteria were transferred to N14 light medium and allowed to continue to grow. From this point onward, newly replicated DNA will be made with the light form of nitrogen. They called their first sample Generation Zero. After the transfer to light medium, a sample was taken every 20 minutes which is the generation time for E. coli cells growing at their optimal temperature. The DNA from the samples was prepared for high-speed centrifugation. Messelson and Stahl found the following results. In generation zero, all of the DNA was in the heavy form. After one generation, the DNA was neither heavy nor light, but an intermediate density. After two generations, half of the DNA was light and half was intermediate. After additional generations, more of the DNA was in the light form and less in the intermediate form. Generations 0 through 2 provide enough information to determine which model of DNA replication is correct.
Click on the correct model. What would these hypothetical data suggest about DNA replication? Click on the appropriate model. Drag the appropriate density profiles to the generations on the left. Although we have examined what the data would look like for all three types of replication, keep in mind that Messelson installs real data match with semi-conservative replication.